What's good YouTube? It's your boy Amaro PG. I hope you're having an amazing morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. And today begins a brand new journey across the world of Final Fantasy XIV Online. A realm reborn. Now, a brief history between me and Final Fantasy games. The only one I've ever played and completed, I believe, is Final Fantasy X. Um, I never grew up with these games, so the only one I've completed is that, and I absolutely loved that. I'd done that on stream like two years ago. So then after that, I thought, let's play my first ever MMO. And this is when I was streaming on my PlayStation, and I played Final Fantasy XIV and got quite far in it. I was playing with a friend. I barely was focusing on the story. I was on PlayStation. The game didn't look as good, so on and so forth. But today... We begin Final Fantasy. I'm going to get involved in the story. I'm going to be focusing on everything. Uh, so if that's what you want to see, you know, someone who's actually going to listen to the story, read as much of the dialogue as I can. Um, I probably won't be reading all of it out loud because there's a lot. Um, but yeah, this is basically going to be my first full playthrough and I can't wait to get to Heaven's Ward and further on. So yeah. Tips and tricks are always appreciated in the comments down below. And before we start, let's watch the opening movie. Ah, uh, Hydaelyn. A vibrant planet blessed by the light of the crystal. Amid azure seas, Encompassing the westernmost of the three great Man, that voice. There lies a realm embraced by gods and forged by heroes. It wouldn't be a JRPG. Oh, damn. Without flashbangs. The annals of Eorzean history chart the rise of a succession of great civilizations. Okay, so the world's called Eorzea. Age of Peace, the Astral Era. To date, all have proven ephemeral. I don't know what that means. Damn! In the year 1572 of the sixth and most recent astral era, the Northern Empire of Gollumall amassed a great army at the heart of Eorzea, seeking dominion over all. Rising in desperate resistance, the forces of the Eorzean Alliance met their would-be conquerors in the field. Okay. Yet, even as the battle raged, the lesser moon, Dalamo, was plucked from the heavens through imperial machination. Okay. From its core, he murdered ah, okay. the older primal Bahamut, who unleashed his fury upon the realm. Damn. Station brought Eorzea to its knees and the era to its end. Some badass mage, man. Wait. Did he like reset the world or something? Five years have come. And gone. The light of life still shines. God, this car seems good. I'm not gonna lie, I have it I have a reshade on and I think it's making this look even better. I don't like cat girls, I don't like cat girls, I don't like cat girls. The realm is forever changed, a stranger to him once more. Yet heedless of what lies ahead, he shall press on. Spurred by the promise of peace and prosperity. Amid this period of great change, an adventurer arrives in Eorzea. Yes, he does. The tale is yet unwritten. Cool. Not bad. Wait. God, I love that music. May he ever walk 
in the light of the crystal. And again, it wouldn't be a JRPG if there weren't flashbangs. Ladies and gentlemen, Final Fantasy 14 begins now. Now when I click start, you're going to see some characters from a long time ago of, what's it called, uh, free trials and stuff like this. But I bought the game, I bought the main game, so I don't know what I get with it, but um, it only cost me £10. I'm not sure what game I bought, I think I just bought the, the original. Um, I hope the audio is all good, I hope the visuals are all good. Do let me know, but what we're going to do right now is get straight into character customization, and we are going to begin our journey. I have no idea what we're going to do class-wise, boys and girls. I have absolutely no idea. Um, as you can see, we haven't got Rothgar or Vieira. We have Hjur, uh, who are said to be the first travel to Azoria from the continents and islands. The Elizin. The Elizin were the sole inhabitants of Azoria's claiming dominion over her. Okay, so they must have been the first people. Um, we have the Lalafell. A wee people, shorting, sporting short, rotund bodies. The Lalafell appear as no more than children to the eyes of most. Uh, you guys know me, I'm six foot four. I don't choose small characters, sorry. Then we've got the cat people, Makoti. The ancestor of the Makoti made their way to Eorzea during the Age of Endless Frost. We've got the chat, the Shrek people, Rogadine. Known for their brawny builds and piercing eyes, the Rogadin are the largest and most rugged of Eorzea's races. And we have the Ura, the curved horns, and beautifully patterned scales that characterize the aura often give rise to speculation that members of the Seolite race are native to the far eastern continent of Ovart are in fact the progeny of dragons. This, however, has long been disputed. Yep, they're not dragon people. They're clearly goat people. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of that. All right, I'm a simple guy. I go elf or cure. Part of me wants to go Lalafell. Um, but I think we go... Damn, girls! Uh, I think we go... Elf. Well... Well, let's see. Hmm. You have this elf, or you have... Oh, cool. Okay, and what about humans? What the... Uh-huh. What? Wait. Oh. oh, okay, I get it. Ah, oh, and then you've got like normal humans and like butch, dutch. Okay. Let me just see. Is this gonna be too bright? Oh, that looks great. Yeah, that looks great. Happy with the shader. Yeah, look how blurry that is. I like it. I like it how sharpened it is. All right. I think the play is to go that creepy looking grey elf. Kind of looks hmm. badass. Let's read them. Uh, for hundreds of years, the Wildwood Elizin have lived in the relative safety of Eorzea's lush forests with the formation of Eorzea's governments. However, many Wildwood ventured forth from the forests, drawn to the exhilarating cosmopolitanism of nearby Gladania. Okay. And then we have the Dusk White. Centuries ago, a number of Elizin sought out a life of peace and seclusion in the depths of Eorzea's ca Ah, they're the cave elves. Dark elves. Today, they are called the Dusk White. Though to their wildwood cousins, they are known simply as the Greys. That's not racist at all. After their preference for darkness and stone. Huh. They have more intelligence... Less decks. So I guess these are the archers and these are like the casters. Um, the cave dwelling ways of the Duskwood persist with some among them turning to robbery and pillaging to survive, earning them the scorn of their woodland relatives. There are a few differences between the genders, but Duskwood females are often regarded as being the more passionate and unyielding of the two. I think, to not make it boring and do what everyone else does, we might go Duskwood. Hmm. Yeah, these guys look badass. Of course, I'm extremely tall. Um, how do I go back? 
and see what the female version looks like. Uh, you know what, it doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, if we want to be a villain, that's the play. No, too, too chatty. He needs to look... Okay. He needs to look rough around the edges. I'm thinking like a, sh a light greeny look here. Is there green? I think I have an idea of who I might make. Okay. Hairstyle. Can I be bald? Or else not allowed to be bald? What? Damn, that head! Bro, I can't be bald? Damn, I wanted to make Voldemort. <laughs> that head is a thing of beauty. I'm going to do it. I can't believe we can't be bald, bro. Jeez, this guy's got two brains in there, bruv. We could just go full on elegance mode. I feel like everyone and their mother in this game is going to look, like, insanely handsome or beautiful. I kind of want to make an ugly bastard, you know what I mean? I can't believe you can't go bald. That, that's baffling. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm going to get laughed at. Alright. There's black... As it gets. There we go. We could have like a, a yellow highlight. Yeah, like... No, no, dark green for Slytherin. I can't believe it. For somehow, I've... Somehow I'm making Voldemort. I don't know why. But we are. Vo not Vo Voldemort with a man. Then. That's the beauty of character creation, man. You never know what's going to happen. Um, Can we make our skin colour a bit... Maybe that's the play. I don't like it in this light, though. Eye shape. Oh, Father Cadaver! Little beady eyes. Those look soulless. Oh, now he's looking angry. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Tiny. Oh, oh that, doesn't, that doesn't change anything. Eye colour? Red. Pretty sure he had red eyes. Hmm. I can't believe we can't go bald, man. Nose. Oh man, if only we could like just get rid of it. That one looks interesting. The thinnest. There we go. Bro, he actually is Voldemort. -y. I don't think the skin color is right though. Yeah, that's the best we're gonna get. I still can't believe you can't go bald, man. Lip colour, bro. I'm a... No. Um, I think the lips are fine. Could make him silver. Oh, damn. Voldemort has blue eyes. Okay, I've got a picture of him up. Creepy looking bastard. I always thought he had black eyes. Uh, red eyes. Oh, Father Cadaver! Okay. I think 
Those eyes are better as well. Damn. Such a shame we have to do eyebrows. We'll do those ones because he looks angry. Ugh, that nose. I think we do the, the ugly down pointing nose. Just because it's a disgusting nose. Sorry if that's your nose. Um, I think we go with them lips and uh, crazy enough. His lips are a little bit ready. That sounded weird. Not as white as I thought they'd be. Ear shape. Yeah, even his elf ears are ugly. Yeah, I don't like not. Uh, you know it's going to clip through shit. Let's just go with those. No, let's go with those. I can't believe we can't be bald. No hair. Nope, we're good there. Oh, find a cadaver! He needs to sound old as hell. Oh, that's good. That's not bad, you know. <laughs> That's good, you know. Six so far. <laughs> nah. <laughs> that laugh, perfect. Bro, just for that laugh. <laughs> That's absolutely perfect, bro. All right, we've got him. I'm so annoyed that we can't make him bald. Darker blue is better. All right, and there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Voldemort. <laughs> now the name's already going to be taken. Um, definitely the thirteenth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What's an unlucky month? Uh, I feel like he'd be born on February the 29th, right? <laughs> there you go, look. Was he even born? <laughs> okay, what the hell's this? Goddess of war. Goddess of love. No, something tells me no. Goddess of knowledge could work. Goddess of fate. Goddess of navigation. God of travelers. Architecture. Oh, God of the arts. The God of Destruction. <laughs> well. <laughs> Ralgar, Breaker of Worlds, is the God of Destruction and Guardian Deity of the now fallen nation of Alomigo. He commands the element of lightning and is associated with the eighth moon of the Eorzean calendar. Ralgar. Wait, I'm... The eight, wait, no, no, I'm August. I don't know what the eighth moon is. Ralgar is the father of both Bjurgut and Halon and serves as attendants to my Nymir. He is most often depicted as a magus carrying a staff. Bro, that's perfect. His symbol is the streaking meteor. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. A scuffed Voldemort if he was in Final Fantasy. Can we not adjust time of day? Oh, here we go. Cool. Now, obviously, being that I'm Voldemort, I've kind of spoiled what class I'm going to be. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going Arcanist. Or former touch. Um, I 
I have no idea. I don't think I can go Conjurer, right? I think that's a healer. And healing scares me. I think... In the hands of a skilled practitioner, former Teji can be a force of terrifying destruction. I mean, it just writes itself. At the heart of this school of magic lies the ability to call forth and command the latent ether within oneself through deep introspection. To then mold that ether into sorcery, the former Teji makes use of a scepter or staff. The name's gonna be taken, right? Surely. If that's not taken, I don't know what people are doing. What? God, he looks evil. I love it. Okay, we're still not done. Bear with me. No, I think that's perfect. We'll go that. We'll go that. There it is. All right. I'm done. That's the one. Badass. Ladies and gentlemen. Final Fantasy 14 <laughs> yeah. begins now. Except for there's probably a queue, so I'll edit that out. I shall see you when the game starts. And in we go. The adventures of Voldemort Riddle begin now. I can't believe that name wasn't taken. I don't know how it works in Final Fantasy. Maybe you can have more than one. I love that music. <laughs> Father Cadaver. I've gone for Voldemort because Hogwarts Legacy just yeah. came out. Okay, we're already getting blinded. Look at him. <laughs> Here. Feel. Well, yeah, I'll do both of those things because I can't see anymore, love. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, how do I join those guys? I love how it actually looks like a, 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 a wand. That's perfect. Now we just need to get a pet snake. Hey! Hey you! Alright, I'm gonna voice a badass. Imagine having to fight those giants. Ugh, that kind of excitement ain't good for the heart. You be careful around them brass blades. Bastards will have the shirt off your back if they fancy it. Oh, thank the gods for sending some beastmen to the rescue, eh? Seeing as we've still got a long ride ahead, you mind keeping me company till we arrive? Guess I've got no choice. Them youngins don't much care for conversation, see? Brent's the name, and Pedlin's me trade. I'm Voldemort. <laughs> I judge him by your unusual garments. I'll wager you one of them new adventures. Man, maybe I should have went with the ugly face. Yeah, something like that. I knew it. Going wherever the wind blows, seeking fortune and glory. And that's what I call living. As long as you avoid dying, I mean. What was it that first attracted you to adventuring? Power. Power! Power! <laughs> power? As in a... Power to do good, like protecting the weak and fighting for what's right and all that, eh? I thought that's what you meant. Well, adventurers do get up to a lot of fighting, that's for sure. you never be short of a chance to polish your Warcraft. Yes, yes. When you arrive in town, you best enroll in the Adventurers Guild. They'll set you on your right path. Won't hurt to join a guild either. All that's home to a few, so if you fancy learning how to fight with a sword, or even spells, you should think about seeking one out. Yes, yes, yes. Just remember, though, more important things than fortune and glory, such as breathing. Oh, cheers, mate. By the by, is this your first trip to Uldar? Yes, yes. Do you know where one can get his head shaved? Uh, is it? Well, then let's just race altogether. But that won't happen while she still commands the loyalty of the royalists. And the royalists are nothing if not loyal. 
interesting. So you've got a queen and her royalists. And then, oh, I forgot their name, but the council, the government basically are trying to get rid of the queen and her royalists. Okay. These factionists have, oh, there you go, have long fought over power, thrown the weight of their wealth against each other. Of course, the lizardmen, that's the Amalgia, couldn't care less about old armed politics. They have their own interest, interests. So they ain't afraid to use force to serve them. They say war is a gift to peddlers. Change me to say I'm inclined to agree. Ah, at long last. Behold, Uldar, jewel of Fanalin, where folk turn sand into gold. Deep in the sun-baked south, surrounded by the shifting sands of an endless desert, she rises. A solitary rose amidst the dust and rock, a symbol of defiance. Her name, Ulda. Settings are on maximum, by the way. Even with the comments. A like and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. But never for you guys as it does for me. Over here! I mean you. Fresh off the carriage by any chance, eh? <laughs> Name's Wimmond. And my business is knowing every bugger else's. Now then, what if I was to offer you some invaluable advice by way of wealth to our fair seat? Free of charge, even. Uh, how do I get those sunglasses? Someone mentioned it. Make sure you do... Here it is. Legacy. There we go. If there's anything in the settings you guys recommend, do let me know. But for now... Um... We're good to go. Let me do my HUD, though. This needs to move. You guys don't mind. Listen. One thing I'm going to do with this game is take it as slow as possible. I'm a very honest person when I play these games. If there's st stuff I like, I'll let you know. If there's stuff I don't like, I'll let you know. No add-ons, nothing, by the way. Um, the only thing that's different is I'm using the unofficial launcher. Because uh, it downloaded the game quicker for me. I don't know why, but it did. I think I have my UI a little bit bigger. So uh, people who are watching on mobile or something can see a little bit clearer. Um, but that's looking much better. I think I did a great job there. So let's continue. Wait up. There we go. All right, initiating quests. All right, we're going to skip all this. Voldemort riddle. Let's go. It's plain to anyone with eyes. You don't know your way around here. You're starting to get mugged or worse if I let you off. Okay. Before you do anything, you want to head over to Quicksand and speak with Mamodi. Alright. Man, I really hope I can go bald. Maybe I should have gone human. Oh no, because no, because then I wouldn't have been able to go green. You've begun a quest. Okay, there's the duty list. Looks great. Let's see this. Bloody night and day, isn't it? Alright. Why the hell am I running like this? Fools! Voldemort is here! Complete a quest by right clicking. Okay. Milady! Hello? Oh. Hello, who do you My name's Voldemort. Oh, what a cadaver! If you're looking to join the guild, you've come to the right place. Name's Mamodi. I own this fine establishment. I also manage the guild here in Uldar, so you might say that looking after green adventurers like yourself is my vocation. That's racist. You're a racist. 
<laughs> what do you mean, green? And lucky for you, that is, without someone like me to steer you right, you'd soon find yourself out in the middle of nowhere. Caught up in business, you don't understand. God, man, it looks so good. Like our conflict with the Amalja, for example. Then there's the Galian Empire. None can say for sure what they're plotting these days. Oh, damn! Hey, the people drink and make... Hey, this place ain't so bad. People drink and make merry, but underneath it all, there's worry. Worry and a lingering feeling of loss. Where the hell's this? Nice. And little wonder. It's scarce been five years since the lesser moon cracked. Opened like a giant egg. Releasing an abomination intent on turning the realm into an eighth hell. What? So much was lost in the blink of an eye. It was like the world, end of the world had come at last. So when I first played A Realm Reborn, I was playing with somebody and barely paid attention to all of the story. So one thing I'm going to be doing this time is playing, like, full-on embracing the lore as much as possible. Um, and I can't wait to read what you guys say. If there's anything I missed, do let me know in the comments. But also protect me from spoilers, ladies and gentlemen. And then things begin to get foggy. Everyone's got their own version of what happened next. Some of them two or three. You'd think people would remember something like that, but the fact is they don't. Nobody does. Oh, maybe she's on about what happened, uh, that cutscene at the beginning. But maybe, like, what that wizard done was like he, like, casted like a giant Obliviate. Uh, it's a spell in Harry Potter. That, like, makes people forget or something. But why? Why would you make people forget? I guess so there's not a lot of pain? I don't know. Um, there was one thing that survivors agree on though. The part played by a band of adventure who laid down their lives for a realm that wasn't their own. They fought valiantly and like so many others they never returned. Damn. It's a shame our recollections of those brave heroes. Brave heroes are just as jumbled as those of the calamity itself. So, so that must be it. That cutscene must be called the Kalami. Whenever we try to call their faces to mind, it's like they're standing between us and the midday sun. Damn. But even if we can't remember them, we'll not let them be forgotten. And so we call them the Warriors of Light. And they'll forever stand as a shining example of what adventurers can achieve. That's why I welcome new arrivals like yourself to our fair sea. Oh. All I ask is that you lend a helping hand. Promise that, you can join the guild. Yes, yes. Alright, then a promise is a promise. Y yes. I am a man of my promises. I'm counting on your help to put the past behind us. We need people working and spending. We need people working and spending and bickering like the old days. And a happy and prosperous Aldar means more business for the quicksand, too. Any road, let's make this official. Go ahead and write your name in the register, neat as you can. Voldemort! <laughs> Voldemort Riddle! Why well, ain't that a charming name? Just rolls off the tongue! Yes, yes. Alright, Mr. Riddle, on behalf of the Adventures Guild, I officially. Please, sir, be merciful. Twelve is my witness. I swear to you, I'll bring you your money. Yo! Imagine get bullied by him. He is pretty badass. Yes, in the East, it is said that even a merciful god might be driven to vengeance and thrice... If thrice blasphemy. Be grateful you were given a fourth chance to offend. You two, attend to this scum. No, please! Mercy! Well, ain't that a sorry sight? Or an uncommon one, if I'm honest. Don't worry, though. If you work hard, I doubt you'll end up like him. Just the same, if you ever need a bit of advice about one thing or another, pay me a visit. Just don't go bothering me every time you stub your bloody toe, all right? Oh, don't worry. Of course, I do enjoy hearing tell of a gentleman's woes with the woman folk from time to time. <laughs> what the hell? What's a woman folk? <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, welcome to all Darv, all the more. <laughs> Oh man, this is gonna be fun. 
Take a moment to catch your breath, and I'll teach you a little bit about our fair city. And there it is. This concludes the introductory game tutorial. You have taken the first step as an adventurer in the city of Uldar. Listen well to the wisdom of Mamodi Modi, then go forth and discover the incredible adventures that await you. Umbral Ice and Astral Fire. Wait, what the hell? Hold up. All right. Let's not over get overwhelmed a little bit here, but all right. <clears throat> Astral Fire and Umbral Ice are special status effects which allow former Turges to continuously deal devastating amounts of damage while still conserving their MP reserves. Casting one of the fire spells gives a former Turge the effect of Astral Fire, which increases the potency, which is power, and MP cost of further fire spells. At the same time, it lowers the potency and MP cost of Blizzard spells, but prevents the natural or spell-assisted gradual restoration of MP. Hmm, so... Do I want to go fire, 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 ice, 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 fire, fire, fire? Or do you want to sometimes switch in between? Seems I've chosen quite a confusing class. So casting one of the fire spells gives you the effect of Astral Fire increases. So yeah, if you want to increase the potency. No, maybe you want to go fire, ice, fire, ice. Conversely, casting one of the blizzard spells gives a former turge the effect of Umbral Ice, which decreases the MP cost of ice spells, while increasing the speed at which MP naturally recovers. At the same time, it lowers the potency and MP of fire spells. Huh. As a former touch progresses in level, the number of Umbral Ice and Astral Fire effects, which can be stacked at one time, increases. The larger the stack, the more powerful the effect. Learning when to switch between fire and ice is key. Damn. And this is our stack here. Uh, main scenario quest, we know about that. The Elemental Gorge indicates whether you are under the influence of Astral Fire after casting a Fire Spell or Umbral Ice, Umbral Ice after casting a Blizzard Spell. While under the influence of Fire, all Fire Spells will have increased power, but require more MP. While under the influence of Ice, all Ice Spells will have reduced cost. And you will have significantly increased MP recovery. So what I'm... F here in here is use all your fire then use your ice to get your MP back rinse and repeat now I could be wrong furthermore when maintaining stacks of fire and ice a spell of the opposite element can be cast at no cost that's the kicker there so when maintaining stacks of ice, of fire, so one, two, three, when I've got all three, that's probably when I switch to ice and it doesn't give me the cost, but it gives me the MP regen back. I could be wrong here, but this is a, a fun system. I'm not going to lie. And this has been a fun start to Final Fantasy XIV. I greatly appreciate everyone being here and watching um, I can't wait to continue. Be sure to like and subscribe. Check out my Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Mario RPG. And join the Discord if you want to join in future raids and dungeons. A Mario RPG. The Discord's in the description. All my socials are in the description. Thank you so much. I shall see you next time for more adventures of Voldemort Riddle in Final Fantasy XIV. See you then. And thanks for being you. Bye-bye.